Hey guys, how's it going today? This is Captain Energy. Today we're going to take a look at something that was requested by one of my subscribers. The request was, how do you separate individual drums to their own tracks in Reason? Well, that's actually really easy to do. So I'm going to show you how. Um, I'm going to show you three different ways to do it. The first one, let's get a drum kit in here. And we need a uh, pattern to mess with. So I'm going to drop a player in here. That should give me what I need. And I'm just going to drop that down here. And there we go. And I'm going to delete this player. Don't really need it anymore. All right, here we go. Right now, we have this drum pattern. And as you can see, looking right here, all the drums are on one track. This is how you'd normally record a drum track if you were just finger drumming a track and um, all your notes would just get dropped to one lane. Okay. Now, first, what we want to do is uh, bring that to its own lane, each each drum to its own lane. As you can see, there are four drums here. We have a snare, uh, kick drum, sorry, snare drum, hi hat, and clap. Each of those is on. Uh, each of them is their own instrument. So first, we're going to go into tools. I'm going to show you how to open that. Press F8, boom, and there's your tool window. This tool window, I completely had forgotten about. I don't use it that often, but another one of my subscribers, um, shout out to uh, Steve, mentioned it to me, and I remember that it was here because there are other ways to do this, but this is the most efficient way. All you do is open this tool window up, F8, like I said, opens this up. Go to the bottom down here where it says extract notes to lanes. There we go. Got to be out top, touch the lane. Go over here, click explode, and now I hit duplicate or move. There are two different ways to do it. Move changes it so all the notes go to their own lanes and there is a, an empty track left where it used to be. As you can see right here. This is where it used to be on. Empty, nothing. All the notes have moved to their own lanes. Or, I'm going to control Z, I can hit duplicate which will move all the notes to their own lanes. I'll stand up with an empty still but that's no big deal. But the uh, last lane right here has the whole mix okay i'm going to keep that around i'm going to go with that one just so that i have it because it's part of what i'm going to show you here all right i'm going to mute this for a second and now if i press play all we hear is the individual notes and they're all there each one is on its own lane and i can go in here and i can modify this one lane easily knowing that I'm just working with one note. So I can go in here, I can just drop another note right here. There you go, double kick at the end. Um, now that's one thing, okay? Now, the one thing that I want to mention here is that when you look at the top, I'm going to close these, this toolbar by pressing F8. That should get rid of that. And there we go. When you look at the top here in the mixer, you'll notice that they're all still coming through one stereo channel. Now, that is the part that I think is where you may want to go also, is to have your notes not only on their own lanes, but on their own channels in the mixer. This will allow you to do different kinds of automation and uh, simplifies modifying your mix in the future. Uh, so what I'm going to show you right now is, let's go out here, close this sequencer for a second. Bring this over here. How to add more channels on your mixer for your sounds. By the way, if you like this kind of content, please drop me a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll get future videos that I'm going to be putting out. This has got a, a lot of content coming. And this is uh, just one of the videos that I've been asked to make. And uh, I'm also going to be bringing a lot of these over to, to Cubase as well so that they're kind of parallel to each other. Anyway. So here we are in the uh, drum machine. We've got our, our notes down below. What we need now is we need uh, channels for these to go to. Okay, so I'm going to click this plus and I'm going to hit create a mix channel. Well, now we've got a mix channel. You can see it right here. I'm going to duplicate that mix channel by touching it, clicking it, and pressing Control D. Okay. And there we go. Control D on the PC or Command D on a Mac uh, will duplicate that 
So now we've got four channels, one for each drum, as I mentioned. We have a kick, snare, hi-hat, clap, right? Now I'm going to press tab, and you can see that on the back of the Kong, there are, uh, everything is going through this main audio out. Let's disconnect that first, okay? I'm going to press tab one more time here, and we're going to expand the drum and FX section here. This will allow us to see each drum as it is in the system and what it's playing through right now they're all going through master effects you'll see that right down there see what i want to do is i want to separate them so i'm going to take this kick drum and i'm going to change it from master effects to output three and four i'm going to take my snare and drop it on five and six i'm going to take my closed hi-hat drop it to seven and eight and i'm going to take my clap which is on seven and we're going to drop that Two, nine, and ten. Now, each of them is technically being pushed out to one of these outputs on the back here. Okay, I'm gonna zip this up down the bottom here. We're gonna just fold that. All right, so we can see our output channels and our out, uh, input channels on the mixer and the output channels on the drum machine. Now, if I press play, you still don't hear anything. That's because nothing is wired up. That's one of the cool things about Reason is that you can kind of connect things the way you want them hooked up. It's just one of my favorite features ever. Um, having come from a hardware uh, studio world of hard, you know where you could hook up things any way you want to do. I'm going to drag this uh, 3 and 4 out to the first channel. So right here. And now we're going to take this one. Next is my snare. And now we're going to take 5 and 6. I'm sorry, this is 7 and 8. That was 5 and 6. 7 and 8. Drop right there. Hi-hat. And now, last but not least, is my clap. Now, the really cool part here is that if I go up top, okay, here we have it. Each drum is on its own channel. This is great. We don't even need this mix channel if we don't want it. This is the one that they were on before. I'm going to drop it, actually. I'm going to delete it. Why not? Right? It's just an extra channel sitting there making making a mess of things. Um, so now here we are. We've got our stuff out. Now this is cool because you can actually use... Uh, these can be affected in different ways right up here. We could apply different effects from the mixer. We can control levels of each of them from the mixer. Automation can be applied from the mixer. Uh, and you can also edit these a lot easier because, like I said before, everything's on its own lane. You can see all the notes. So here we are. This right here is our clap. You know, if I go over here to our, this is our clap right here. I go right here, and I can just actually put, we can change the name on, on the mixer so we can see them a little better even than before. I go right here. Kick. Instead of just saying what they are on the back of the uh, drum machine, we can tell it. And there we go. Now we have everything uh, easily editable, easily visible. You know, you can't ask for much more than that. But there is one more thing you could ask for. And that is, what about people who might not have the drum kit you're using? What about uh, handing this thing over to somebody to remix and they don't have what you have? You've got your own drum kit you've put together. They don't have, we'll say, you know, the Spanish fly drum kit, whatever you created, you know? Well, you can take these and you can render them out as audio. Now, this has two benefits. One is that if you hand this off to somebody to work on and you've rendered these in audio and they're on individual tracks like they have right now, okay, not only can they edit them, but they can also do cool tricks with them. They could, like, reverse something. You can't reverse this. If you reverse this, you can reverse the notes. That's not, not going to really do much. They're just going to play in a different order. But once it's rendered to audio, stuff like that has, a, we'll say, a reverb on it turns into what we used to refer to as preverb, which is that, like, sucking sound, you know, that you get in some of these drums. Sometimes you hear drums from the 80s with, like, kind of a sucking sound to them where it, like, kind of sounds like they're playing backwards. That's how you create that. You add reverb and then flip it around. 
you know, or, well, actually, we used to flip it around, then add reverb, then flip it back around. That would, that's what created the actual preverb sound. But the idea is the same. Anyway, so let's see. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. If I go down to this last one, unmute it, right click it, and hit bounce in place, it's going to take all of those tracks above it, everything else, except for the one that we just clicked on, which is the complete track. We don't need it anyway because we wanted the individuals. Um, and now I'm also going to mute this drum player, drum kit right here. All right, and I'm going to fold that. Now if I play it, oh, look at that. We have everything, only it's coming from the audio part. See, here we are. Here's the audio. Um, now this is super cool stuff because, like I said, I can come in here now and I can go, I can do things like this. I can come grab a... Let's take this to half a bar, and we'll go right here, and snip this right here, and snip that right there. This is just a quick little demo of what you could do with this thing. And now I'm going to take you, and we'll go right down here and reverse you, and I'll reverse you, and now... Do you hear that sound? That's the reverse sound. Pretty cool, right? Try and do that with MIDI. You can't. Because it's only something you can do with audio. And this is how you get the audio to do that with. That's it, pretty much. Now that we've separated the track, you can do whatever you want with it. Hand it off to another person. They can work with it. You've got it forever. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope that was helpful to somebody. If you liked the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, let me know what you thought of the video in the comments. I'll be here working on my next video for you guys. And I'm probably going to be doing a live cast this weekend. So I hope I'll see some of you, th some of you there. Be safe. Take care. Make some music and have some fun.